Yeah. And then that was really what was going into my point about Razorback basketball is showing the level of excitement and intrigue and everything about this basketball program. Because, yes, football, a real game on the road in the SEC, regardless of how good the opponent is or not, you going out there and dominating and doing it in a pretty – confirmed. you only had a 50-burger on them. That's mm-hmm. that's normally pretty impressive. And I think Razorback fans, before the season starts, it's like, hey, you're, you're one of these road teams you're going to play this year. You're going to put 50 on them. You're going to beat them by four scores or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, heck yeah, sign me up for that. But then it's like, but also, there's this game that actually doesn't count, but it's against Kansas. And Kansas is going to be without some of their key players. But you, same with Arkansas, but you're going to win and win convincingly. I just don't know how many people have been like, well, yeah, that's definitely more exciting than a road SEC win. But that's where we are in this moment and shows just the level of like, man, people are all in on basketball. They're all in on this team. Uh, that was a really fun thing to watch. And it's it's not just hype for the sake of hype. It's hype in the realistic expectation of this team could do something extremely special this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. No doubt about it. I wish that the uh, the basketball exhibition was a week later. Like if we could run back this poll and let's say Arkansas beat Kansas in a in a basketball exhibition, but then they won by one against Ole Miss in this football game, I bet it'd be a lot different. The story, I, I really think it's the opponent thing. A hundred percent. Like if Arkansas yeah. beat Ole Miss, that's an objectively better SEC win. My right. only other pushback was going to be how many teams could do to Mississippi State what Arkansas just did to Mississippi State. I would say probably 30 to 40 in the country. Uh, like, not everybody. You know, they've played some other teams. Like, I'm not saying they would everybody, but, I mean, Toledo beat them by, like, four touchdowns. Uh, so it's not necessarily like they faced, a, you know, a, 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 a stalwart of a team over there. I don't think there's that many teams, even with Hunter Dickinson out and with some guards, I, I really don't think there's that many teams in college basketball that would do to Kansas what Arkansas just did to them. By the way, I'm uh, I'm having to put this video that we're playing the highlights here on, on mute just so uh, we don't get hit with uh, – OnlyFans content or Pornhub because this is this is some sexy stuff that you're watching, folks, and we don't want to get flagged for it. Uh, but yeah, just Love to it was see just it. a yeah, man, it was a fun night, and I know we were all there. And of course, we've we've put out a lot of content over the weekend. And Curtis and Andrew is going to be down at TCU in Fort Worth this Friday night uh, covering the game too. But just how fun that was to see see the team Boogie Fland, of course. I think if anybody ever, I think people knew the players' names for the most part, but they really didn't know how good they're going to be or like really see them showcased. And I think after something like what happened Friday night, uh, there's going to be a lot of great players on this team, but Boogie Flan, I think is one the one that everyone's talking about after the Friday night game came to an end. Do, do people now understand why I tend to get a little pissed off and irritated when we get the so-and-so said Arkansas doesn't have a point guard deal. Th- yes. This right here is why that irritates me. Um, PG one, there, there are no questions about Arkansas's point guard position. Um, and yes, Boogie Flan's going to have his ups and downs. He's not going to, uh, you know, put up 22 with five assists and six steals every game. That dude's a, he's a baller, man. He's a pro. Um, he's going to be really, really good for Arkansas. And the fact that you have, uh, this dynamic where he's come in as a true freshman and looks so comfortable back there already. Uh, DJ Wagner is a guy who, has SEC point guard experience who looked really, really comfortable, I thought, playing off the ball in this exhibition, <clears throat> and Nellie Davis, who still can't move his wrist, and, and we know what he's going to be when he's healthy. So um, I do not see a, a point guard problem at Arkansas, and that's not um, a new development in my mind just because of an exhibition, but it kind of validated what I was saying all along. And, uh, man, this team's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So much talk about the backcourt. When you got a guy like Bill Self, who you're always going to be complimentary of the team that you just played, uh, but his words speak volumes to me when he says them. When he says that it's going to be the best trio of guards that Kansas faces all year, that that perks my ears up, man. Like I, I hear that, and it's early, but I think he's saying that this is a really, really talented bunch, uh, and we're not even talking about the MVP, which is Big Z. Well, and part of why I really was with you and pushing back on the po- point guard issue is because it's not like Arkansas is super dependent on one of these guys. Like if you were asking John L. Davis and he was your only – you know, big time guard in the backcourt where you're like, hey, you're asking this guy who's a combo guard, more of a score to be your point guard. Okay, I'd get there, be his concern. If it were just DJ Wagner by himself and you're like, hey, this guy who was a huge five star who had a little bit of an underwhelming freshman year was banged up. Now you need him to be your full for sure starting point guard or you're asking a freshman and Boogie Flan. Any one of those guys, I could understand like some hesitancy, but when you have them all together, 
and you've got all these other pieces on the team. You've got a guy in Carter Knox who I think is going to be, you know, continue to make strides and be a really good freshman for Arkansas. I just don't buy that it's a real thing. Uh, I think that Arkansas, the only question is if these guards like playing together, which if our first indication the other day was any, was, was any look at it, I think they're going to be just fine. Uh, and so I don't think Arkansas is going to be like Boogie Fland was awesome and led Arkansas Friday, but he's not going to be asked to go out there and, you know, score 22 every night. He's not going to have that much on his shoulders. And so it's like, I don't, I just never really bought the idea that, Hey, yeah, Arkansas has got to depend on these three uh, potential NBA players. Uh, yeah. Who, who knows if they, if they're, they really have a point guard. It's like, I just don't really think it matters. Yeah. No. That's, that's the thing I, I was looking at it from just the box score and all of that, uh, you know, knowing who played, who didn't play and everything, but you know, so many years it felt like, all right, well you had one or two or sometimes three, but mainly just two guys that you would be like, Hey, yeah, these guys have to play really well. If Arkansas wants to win this game, that's what they have to do. But I, I just don't feel that vibe this time around. I feel like there could be about, you know, eight different guys that could have on any given night lead the team in scoring, you know, or, or being able to get lead them in rebounding or, or have steals or the assist or whatever. It's just incredible to see the high level of talent across the board. And if you watch that game on Friday night or if you were there, you know, they're, they're going to lose games. They're not, I'm, I'm joke 40 and 0, but they're going to lose games. They're going to have bad nights. They're going to struggle. It's going to happen. But you can just look at the team, especially on the individual basis, and be like, yeah, that, that's an NBA player. Like that, that immediately, like right off the bat, you're like, yeah, that dude's just another level uh, type of player. And Arkansas has got quite a few of those guys. And that's what makes it so exciting and so intriguing because, you know, like a Duthiero, a guy that was, you know, I think, is incredible. I mean, he only played 17 minutes in this game. There are going to be times where he leads the team in scoring and has a phenomenal game. There's just oh, yeah. so many options here and so much talent. It, it's almost stupid. And I don't know if you've ever seen this much NBA level talent on one single team in the Razorback basketball program in a long time, maybe even ever. But we'll see how it translates to wins. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun to to follow the journey with these guys as they continue to get better. Like you said, they're going to have their ups and downs, and that's that's when you really learn the most about a team is the first time they kind of, you know, have to face some adversity and you know have a tough night and they take an L. How do they respond? And we'll be able to see all that. But yeah. I mean, first impression was was really, really strong. Uh, you mentioned the arrow, and it's like, yeah, it's I guess what makes me feel comfortable in, in the fact that there could be some sustainability with what we saw on Friday is obviously like no team is the final product or the best version of themselves this early. Um, but you think about, OK, yeah, you know, like Boogie Flan and DJ Wagner, those guys really went off. Boy, I hope Arkansas gets that every night. Well, it doesn't matter, because if they don't, Nellie Davis is probably not going to go two of nine and one of six from three again. And the arrow is probably not going to get hold to your point, John, to, to two points in 17 minutes. Uh, you know, Trevin Brazil, he was fine while he was in there, but he only had five points in this game. Uh, Carter Knox is a guy that we think could be a, an all freshman sec type player. It, it's just, you know, like they had some guys who really pop, but as they kind of regress to the mean, some other guys are going to elevate their play. So you feel good about it. And they don't even have Jonas Adu out there yet. It's so it's a, uh, it's a good situation that Arkansas finds themselves in. And I can't help but think about, I'm only going to mention Jeff Goodman one time on this show, uh, but I, I got really irritated listening to their off season review of like Arkansas on the roster they built. And that's when he kind of started his whole thing about, they just don't have a point guard. They don't have a point guard and him and his buddy on the, the field of 68 were saying, you know, they just, what they need is DJ Wagner needs to become Dewan Harris. He's got to be just like Dewan Harris at Kansas. That, that he has to model his game after that. And then it was actually the true freshman who busted Dewan Harris's ass. And I understand Harris had a big fourth quarter or whatever, but Boogie Flan won that matchup on both ends of the floor a vast majority of that game. And so it's like, do they need DJ Wagner to be that guy? I'm not sure they do. So there you go. Well, you know, there's a lot to be said about the talent on this team. I mean, just the simple, simple talent alone. This might be the most talented Razorback team we've ever seen in just terms of future <laughs> NBA guys and all that. But what I really like about it is we've seen Kentucky have a ton of talented teams under John Calipari, but they didn't really have a ton of adults that you knew you could count on. It was a lot of high variance guys who were freshmen kind of learning their way. And Arkansas has got some of that. I mean, Carter Knox is going to be a guy that I think is going to have some of that variance where some nights he's going to look awesome. Some <laughs> nights he might not be as great in the matchup, whatever the case may be. But when I look at this Arkansas roster, there's a lot of adults. 
One, right off the bat, Boogie Flan clearly is not scared of anybody. Uh, I was blown away by just how confident he looked. I mean, yeah. he did not look like a freshman. I mean, for a guy that's 6'2", 170, I guess that's one thing you're thinking, like, okay, is he physically, is, he, is there going to be an adjustment period to him facing the level of athlete, the le- the size he's going to face? Answer is a resounding no. John L. Davis, who wasn't that great on Friday, is still working his way back. That's an adult. Aduthiero, adult. Jonas Adu, adult. Yeah. Even Carter Knox, who I just referenced as like a child, as a freshman, is 6'6", 225. Like, he's a, he's a unit. Like, Arkansas has got a team full of, and Big Z, Trevin Brazil, guys who are super talented, but are not just like these rusty, you know, weird pieces that we have to mold and to sculpt into great players. Like, a lot of them are kind of at that point in their development where DJ Wagner a year ago I wouldn't have felt that great about. But you see him now, he's clearly making strides in his game, seems a lot more confident. It's not like Arkansas is dependent on a bunch of talented children to go out there and win them games uh and i say talented children that's you know maybe over you're underselling boogie fland a little bit but it's not like you know to your point curtis like they're gonna be like hey boogie carter and billy richmond like you guys gotta carry us they're really not in that position and that makes me feel really good 